my first time in Mizoram University. Kula uh, Sauta, Professor Zomi, Professor Badai, Professor Bhattak. Uh, it's wonderful the set of teachers, professors, assistant professors, and you students and friends. It's so wonderful. Your university is like you're in a resort. It's so beautiful driving down this morning to the university. And thank you. And not for Professor Zomi, we will not have been here. And I acknowledge the presence of uh, Nixon Ilangon also, who is one of the department uh, people here, who ensured that our connect with Professor Zomi made this meeting possible. Uh, yes, please pick up the May 19 latest issue of Femina. Northeast India for the first time, we are on the cover. <laughs> Since 1959, no Northeast person on the cover of Femina. We broke that this time. So 19th May, please pick up a copy of Femina. Men also included. <laughs> At least for your wives or girlfriends. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, let me demystify these 1325. I think Professor also mentioned this particular amazing resolution. But why should we bring this resolution in your beautiful campus in Mizoram? Um, I've also done my international relations, like many of you sitting here uh, from a very, I was known as a bookworm, a scholastic person. Uh, but what made us, or people like us, change from being academicians? To be known as activists, though I really don't know the term what is activism. But people started giving it to us. So we started getting our voices louder for what we believe is right or not right. So I think first of all, um, what we would like to say is, I came to Mizora more than 10 years back to do research on the Mizo Peace Accord. It was my PhD in atomic in G. I met with Brigitte Asylum, God bless his soul, he's no more. But I remember I had extensive meetings with him on understanding the Mizo Peace Accord. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but I have a real connection with uh, and my, uh, one of my uh, cousin brothers married a Mizo woman, and he became a Mizo. He left Manipur and became and <laughs> So you know, that's the, you know, the, the charm of Mizo women. <laughs> so um, I have a lot of connection with Mizo. Uh, but most importantly, for the Northeast, the Mizo Peace Accord, which was signed in 1986, became like a hallmark for an uh, uh, example of how, yes, there may be problems, but, and there may be even a war which happened in Mizoram. The first aerial bombing by the Indian Armed Forces ever on Indian soil was in Mizoram. In 1966, there was an aerial bombing of Mizoram, which is a very tragic incident in history. Um, but in spite of that, Got your peace accord, and Mizoram continues to lead the entire Northeast in peace, or what is called peace dividends of being there. I understand that there are also many challenges, but still, in the entire Northeast, there's one peace accord that we all look up to is the Mizoram Peace Accord, which is a shining example till now. So that's my point. The other thing is this why should a woman from Manipur, from the Northeast, go to the United Nations, or for that matter, raise issues in Delhi on the issue of racial discrimination, violence, and all this. It started with an example uh, when Delhi gang rape happened, I remember, 2012. So there was a whole debate, a, a brutal gang rape, which galvanized the women and men of the country. Because we realized that women are not safe even in our mother's wombs. In Manipur, Girl childs are being killed in the mother's womb. I don't know about her. My sister is a gynecologist, so I know this. Ratio of women is becoming less in Manipur. It's happening in, in Punjab. It's happening in very rich families also. It's a, so right from the mother's womb to being walking on the streets at 9 o'clock. When a woman is always told if you walk at 9.30, you are not a good woman. Though so women and men, men pay taxes, both, for the country. It's a very, very challenging issue. So from the mothers of the womb till the roads, the life of a woman is not secure. This was what happened. And so when the Justice Burma Committee report came out, which the government of India asked, 
the nation was asked to submit on issue of violence against women. We submitted on behalf of the entire Northeast. We say Northeast is a border, is, is an area which is surrounded by five countries. We have got many armed groups. We have got lots, 300,000 Indian armed forces here, and many unidentified people with guns and smugglers. Okay. It's it's a quite a very very you know, very sensitive area. So we submitted that the safety and security of women and men in this part should be given should be given special note. Justice Verma took the issue up. It's there in the Verma Committee report, which you can download online. That 600 page document, which is the most beautiful treatise ever written for ensuring safety of women in India. But when the final bill was passed three months later by the Indian Parliament. The whole section we submitted on Northeast on looking at sexual violence of women in the Northeast was completely left out. Government of India says there is no conflict in India. It's a major thing. No conflict. So 72 armed groups with their guns, 300 armed forces with their guns, there's no conflict. So still, like, we so the issue of United Nations Security Council resolution, even if it came back 2000, in 2000 October, what this document, which is just about three, four pages, please download and read it. It's one of the most beautiful texts ever written on ensuring how should women be made safe in conflict areas. You know, for us, conflict happens in our own minds, with your family. You cannot deny conflict. It's a part of life. How you handle it is what is needed. So we took this text because we were angry. Why did the government of India negate the inclusion of special need of protecting women and children in the Northeast, in the larger paradigm of addressing rape in India? It's a very serious issue. So we took this issue up and uh, we designed a project. So, um, and then this project is operational in Northeast India, Myanmar, and Bangladesh. Chittagong Hill Tracks, which is neighboring Longlai. So because no one had already, nobody had ever looked into this particular thing. There's cross-border trade happening, legal illegal, there's a lot of things happening. So we designed this important work uh, on how to address this issue. And uh, that is number one. Number two is, uh, last couple of years, uh, we have been leading work in Delhi on raising racial discrimination issues. It started with the killing of Nido Tanya. And last year, we handled the case of Julie from your state, who was killed in a flat in Munirka. Um, we went to the same house she was killed. It was, uh, we had formed Northeast India Group Against Racism. And I'm one of the founder members. And we tried to address the issue in a right way, in a right way, with research, with documents, addressing it to the government of India. So when Julie passed away last year, Again, they say she committed suicide. Every young woman dead in Delhi is considered suicide. As if a 25-year-old, 27 beautiful Northeast girl would like to die. We have packed five bodies of those women and sent them. So more than 800 cases of racial attacks against Northeast people in Delhi and Sierra alone in 2013-14 was recorded. We pressurized the government of India and formed the Bezbara Committee, which is now. There is a very close link on this. We will talk about safety and security of this. So this is how the entire issue of um, connection, you see, from our lives. So even here, when Mizo women go to Delhi, where is our safety? There is a stereoty st stereotyping way of addressing. I always say, uh, you know, India is a beautiful country, but it's still a nation in the middle. Because who is an Indian face? Is still defined by the way Aishwarya Rai looks, or the way you know um, Sonam Kapoor looks. It's not the way a beautiful Mizo girl looks. It's a definition of an ideal Indian beauty. That's why Meriko was played by Priyanka Chopra. So we are saying India is a land of multiple looks, and those looks have to be incorporated as a part of. So now what's happening? You know, you know, you know, governments. 
in fact, we, we always chase governments, right? They are corrupt. They are not doing this, they are not doing that. But normally, sometimes, you will have to guide governments also. You can't keep saying, okay, you are not doing anything, you are not doing anything. But what are you as a citizen doing? Okay, and this is what we, 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 we come for. In Manipur, a lot of politicians are very scared of us. But when they meet us and they realize our genuineness, now we are working with many, like, we are not a political organization, it's a very humanitarian organization. But we realize that even our members of parliament or our politicians need our guidance too and our research too. Because it's really important because to connect with the people and what they want. So it is in this context, even in the world, United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 is there. Because India is a member of the nation of the United Nations. So any resolution is passed in the UN is mandatory for India to implement within the country. But India kept running, so we kept chasing. <laughs> it said, hey, you, you signed up to it, you're a member state. You must ensure it'll it'll help India in the long run, actually. It's to help. But right now India says there's no conflict, so there's no term called women in conflict, it's called women in difficult circumstances. Okay. Please remember the word difficult circumstances is a term if you see in uh, Government of India documents on addressing any conflict issue. Okay. So you will not find the word conflict in the uh, documents. It's difficult circumstances. It doesn't matter to us whether it's difficult circumstance or conflict. The issue is address the issue and rectify it. So what we did. So we realized that the men of our northeast are quite uh, <laughs> there are some nice people also. But at least we tried in Kuhnipur and uh, Nagaland and Islam. And realized the best way to get this issue rising is to work with women groups. Seriously, we, we are calm. We, we take care of our homes. If we take care of our homes, we can take care of them. So we started, the last two years what we did with this work was we went to each of the eight northeast states. Mizoram is the last one to visit. But we went to each of the northeast states and then we started connecting with women and men alike and just shared our issues. We are not here to teach you. We are here to listen to you. What is happening in Mizoram? So we did that in, uh, uh, in Tripura, we did that in Arunachal Pradesh, we did in each of the northeast states. No, we also know that the capital is where everyone converged. So we also tried to go to the villages. This time we are still trying to go into Champai and Dungla and other areas. That will depend on the situation. But we always have one meeting in the town where everyone congregates. And then we always try to go to the rural areas to see what are the conditions of people living in the most difficult circumstances. Otherwise our work will be fake, right? We have a meeting, tick off, go back. No, it's not that. It has to be genuine intervention, right? So we did that in each of the northeast states, and then last month we fought, we had the first northeast India women peace congregation, which Professor Zomi was kind enough and she was brave enough to fly down just half a day and to represent Mizora. Okay, please give a warm hand to her. She was everything just for half a day to come and address this first. So for the first time, women of northeast <laughs> India came together in Manipur. In fact, when we did meetings in Nagaland, it was very interesting. Naga women always said, we heard of Manipur as an enemy <laughs> because of the Indo-Naga problem. And now they came, four of them, to our uh, to meet, and it's breaking the ice. So, because we believe in talking and doing. So, my final points are this, because the, the Honorable Minister of Law is here. And Mizoram can set an example. And what we also addressed, and the, uh, this meeting was also chaired by the chief minister of Manipur, he came. He came out of fear. <laughs> you know, we were very surprised when he said yes to our meeting, but he came, but it was really sweet. That you see, we can work together. Scholars, academics, people in civil society, don't think all NGOs are corrupt, okay? Just as all politicians are not corrupt. <laughs> it's always good and bad in everyone. Always reach out to connect. So these are some of the recommendations which you call the informed declaration, which I'll just read out a couple of points. First, unite and strengthen women of the Northeast 
and men of the Northeast in a common platform for peace and security. Number one. Number two. India should honor the international commitment on UNSCR 1925 and on racial discrimination. India signed the International Convention on Racial Discrimination and put it under the table. We now took it up and now showing to India, look, that's what you decide. But right now, again, India says there's no racial discrimination. So there's a lot of work we have to do as scholars and activists together. Third, include women in peace processes all across the Northeast and India. You must include. For example, the Northeast India has uh, 17 peace talks ongoing. There's not a single woman in there. So we must include you. So men and women are like two bicycles, folks. You, one cannot move without the other. <laughs> so it must move together. The second one, include women in electoral processes, judiciary, police force. You must ensure economic decision making and other important decision making which will help in enhancing peace, security, and progress of a state or a nation. It's very, very critical. Um, we also called upon that women of the Northeast and men of the Northeast must stand vigilant against rampant militarization, weaponization. There are a lot of illegal trading going, illegal trade, and all this. So we must remain vigilant because I saw a lot of dedication centers here. Even one of my brothers had a used truck, so I as a family could also see what it means to have because it really waste our youth away. So we have to be very careful. Who's drugging our people? Where are these drugs coming from? I mean, you know, it's okay to enjoy life. It's a different matter. Your whole life is wasted because of abuse of drugs. It's a, it's a national crisis, actually. So very important to do that. We also said there should be inclusion of peace education in educational curriculums. Peace education, as we are learning about. And we also called upon the state to formulate a state action plan on UNHCR 1325. And in September, we are preparing to meet the Prime Minister to and push for a national action plan on India's national action plan on 1325. And can you believe it? The women of Northeast are going to lead the process. Yes, it's the women of Northeast India and the men of Northeast India who's going to dictate the national government, have the national action plan on 1325. Because if we don't do it, no one else will do it. Because we have go, uh, lived under conflict, survived conflict like in Mizoram. Many in the Northeast are still reeling under conflict. These are the issues, and for, for good for we never get the Armed Forces Special Power Act here. Because the reason is not because I'm anti-national. The reason is it violates the Constitution of India itself. And the Armed Forces Special is a British law, which was enunciated in 1942 to thwart the Queen India movement of Mahatma Gandhi. So this act should have no place in a democratic India. So I always say that the Armed Forces Special Power is the greatest dark if you have a dog, you don't have a, a spot on your cloth, you don't feel good, right? So the biggest dog on Indian democracy is the outside. And we do appeal to sensible governments to listen to our voices and quickly remove it if they want votes. <laughs> we are going to get each of these politicians to, 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 to you know, say we will remove it. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And um, so, yeah, these are some of the resolutions and we are convening in September and uh, we, uh, you are most welcome as scholars, as professors, as academics or media people. Uh, we have offices in Delhi and we have offices in Manipur. We also set up offices in Tripura. That you are most welcome to be a part of the process because peace is a collective journey together. And North East India home to 272 beautiful ethnic groups with some of the richest resources in the entire country. We have, to be, we have to remain vigilant to what's happening and negotiate in a peaceful way for what is development for everyone, not just for a few multinationals, for a few people. Well, like Mahatma Gandhi said, there's enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's greed. We have to remember that if we learn to take care of each other, we will have peace in our minds, hearts, Society, state, and nation. Thank you for your attention.